Hi, my name is Jakob and welcome to this video patch on electromagnetic radiation and glass. Now, electromagnetic radiation is a huge topic and in this video we are only going to cover black body radiation. And we're going to cover black body radiation's relationship to glass. Now, understanding this relationship will enable you to understand how uh, an office building gets hot in the summer, how solar thermal panels work, and also why your ice cream melts in your car when it's on a hot parking lot in the summer sun. First of all, everything emits black body radiation and electromagnetic radiation, which we can see, which we call light, is only one small part of this radiation. The largest emitter of black body radiation in the solar system is the sun and the radiation, the black body radiation it emits is the radiation that we use to see in daylight. The electromagnetic radiation spans from telephone, radio waves, microwaves and infrared rays over visible light to UV light, X-rays and gamma rays. And black body radiation is governed by a law. It's Planck's law. It has three constants and two variables. It has the Planck constant, the speed of light and the Boltzmann's constant. It is then dependent on the surface temperature of the object and the frequency. And from this you can get the intensity of the radiation. As you can see, the law doesn't contain anything about which type of material this object is made of. It's simply just the surface temperature that it has which determines um, how much and at which wavelengths it emits black body radiation. Now some examples here are with things which have a thousand Kelvin, two thousand Kelvin, three thousand Kelvin, four thousand Kelvin, five thousand Kelvin and five thousand eight hundred Kelvin surface temperature. And as you can see here, the peak where it emits most of it ra its radiation sort of slopes towards the longer wavelengths as you go down in temperature. And of course the opposite is true when you go up in surface temperature. 5800 Kelvin. Now why is this an interesting number? Well that's the surface temperature of our sun. And we can see that the peak is there around 0 0.7 micrometers. And if we look at where the visible light spectrum is, it's in and around this peak. Now, this is why we can see black body radiation or electromagnetic radiation in this spectrum. It's simply because that's where the sun provides the most. If we could see in any other spectrum, the light would simply be dimmer for us to see. So it makes sense that that's the radiation band that we can see. Black body radiation comes from particles moving around in matter due to the temperature that this matter has. Fast particles means that you get short wavelengths. Slow particles or low temperatures means long wavelengths. Everything emits black body radiation. I do, and you do, and everything around you do. This is a black body radiation spectrum for something which has the surface temperature of me. Now as you can see, the peak where I emit the most of my radiation is at between 10 and 12 micrometers. 
this is quite a far, far um, uh, away from where the sun emits most of its radiation. This is also why I don't glow, because you can't see the radiation which I emit. So everything emits black body radiation. It's just that most of it can't be seen. And we can only see a small part of it from objects which are very hot. So people can't be seen. But molten metal starts to glow. And then we can go on to the surface of the sun, which glows so hot that you can see it. Now, how is this related to the transmission of glass? Well, first of all, we have to understand that glass does not permit all wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation to go through. It's simply not translucent at every wavelength. If we take the radiation spectrum from the sun again, then we can see the wavelengths which is permitted to go through a pane of glass starts at 0 0.3 micrometers up to 2.8 micrometers. And outside of this spectrum, pretty much no electromagnetic radiation is allowed to go through a pane of glass. Now, of course, this is very uh, convenient for us that glass is translucent in the area where we can actually see around the peak of where the sun's light is emitted. But it also has some other interesting uh, consequences. To study what happens with the light as it goes through a pane of glass, if we take one wavelength, 0 0.57 micrometers, 4% of that light is reflected off the surface, 3% is absorbed by the glass and then re-emitted as black body radiation again, but now at the temperature of the glass. So that means much, much colder temperature, of course, than the surface of the sun. And 93% of the light is allowed to go through the pane of glass. At 10 micrometers, the radiation frequency where most of the radiation coming from me is emitted, something completely different happens with glass. 20% of the light is reflected, but 80% is absorbed and then re-emitted at the temperature of the glass. This is the greenhouse effect. Light from the sun, which has a high frequency, is allowed to go through. It then hits an object behind the pane of glass. That could be me. I absorb the light and then re-emit it at my surface temperature, which is then not capable of going through the pane of glass. This is also how the atmosphere works. It allows certain wavelengths to go through it then is transformed and then it's re-emitted and now it's not allowed to go through anymore. But how can we show this? Well, I brought with me a source of black body radiation at a high enough temperature for us to see it. It's a candle. I also brought with me two things which, trans which allows the transmittance of electromagnetic radiation at different wavelengths. The first is black plastic. Now black plastic does not allow visible light to go through. That's why it's black. But what happens if we put it in front of our thermal imaging camera, which looks at a different wavelength, the wavelengths, uh, which are much longer, and see what happens. Now you can see 
that you cannot see the, the candle in visible light, but you can see it in infrared light. And you can actually also see my hand moving behind the plastic. That's because the plastic allows the uh, infrared radiation to go through it. Here I have a plain piece of glass. Now if I put the glass, as I did with the plastic, in front of the light, you can see it quite clearly in visible light, but in infrared light, it's completely blocked. You cannot see anything behind it. And I also talked about this being reflective. Well, if I put this behind the light, you will be able to see it reflect the infrared radiation. This is how radiation, black body radiation and glass works. I hope you enjoyed this small demonstration and video patch and see you next time.